Are you ready to graph this thing? Let's try it. Let's do it. So we have x minus y is greater than 3. We just temporarily did this step to get our, our intercepts. Right now we're going to go back up to here and look to see whether we graph this with a solid or a dotted line. Are we going to be using a solid or a dotted line here? Dotted. Definitely. Or a dashed line. That's really what we mean. Let's go ahead and do this then. Here's how you graph a line with your standard form. After you found your intercepts, this kind of tells you where to go. This says you're going to x equals 3. Can we all go to x equals 3? That's going to be from the origin to the left or to the right here, folks. So 1, 2, 3. Let's just put a point right there. Okay. Y equals negative 3, that's our other intercept. Where are we going to go for Y equals negative 3? Now that's our line. Let's see if we know how to get there. First thing, we are substituting an equal sign temporarily. We're finding each of our x and y intercepts just by covering up, rewriting the rest, and then solving. We put those things on our graph. Just go over the x-axis, go to 3. y-axis, go to negative 3. That's what those variables are telling you to do. Make your line with a dotted or, or a uh, dashed line if it's not equal to. Notice we're, we're setting these all. This is why we don't, go, we don't use this all the time, right? We have to go back to this one. Go back to, to this. If it's equal to, we make it solid. If it's not equal to, then we make it dotted. But we're not done. Because I, I told you at the very beginning when we looked at the solutions that our solution set isn't just going to be a line. In fact, look at this. None of our solutions on the line are actually That's what the dotted signifies. It's like an open circle. You can't actually get there. What we need to determine is whether the solutions are all of these points up here or all of these points down here. Are you with me? It's going to be half of them. It's either going to be all of these over here that are all going to work, or all of these over here that are all going to work, and the other side won't work. That's going to be our final step here. Our final step is going to be to check one point. You don't have to check a whole, whole bunch, and that's kind of nice. You just have to check one point, because if this point works here, all of these points are going to work. If this point doesn't work, all of these points are not going to work. What points will work? Good. So you don't have to check two points. You don't even check three points. Yeah, yeah. Just check one. What now? Can you say that one more time? Sure, I can say that one more time. What we're going to do is check one point on this graph. Uh, pick any one you want. Does it really matter? Uh, we're going to pick a nice one in a little while. But pick any point. Let's say that this one is the point that you pick. One comma one, okay? Let's say that's one one. If this point works in your inequality, Every point on this side is also going to work, and we're going to shade that entire side. You with me? They don't work. If it's true. If it's true, yeah. But let's say that this is not true. Let's say this is false. What that means is every point on this side is also going to be false. You with me on that? But if these are, one side has to be true, one side has to be false. If this side is false, this side is true. Okay. So you just check one point. That's why I said at the beginning of class, you'd be very good at determining whether inequalities are true or false. Because you're going to plug in one point. If it's true, you shade that side. If it's false, you shade the other side. Does that make sense? That's our, our ideas here. Do you guys need these steps anymore? I'm going to erase them because our third step is kind of long and I have to write out all these instructions for you. So step number three, you're going to check one point that is not on your line. Can I check a point on the line? Well, that'd be kind of silly, right? Because if I check a point on the line, would it tell me which side to shade? Not so much. So we're going to check one point that is not on our line.
Check one point not on the line. Now, there's one point that we should try to use all the time if we can. What point do you think that is? Zero. Why would we want to use zero, zero? Yeah, it's easy. We don't even do any math, right? If you pick zero, zero, what's zero minus zero? Hey, it, it's zero, right? That's nice. That's very easy to check. There's only one instance where you cannot use zero, zero. Say that now? Sure. If our line goes through the origin, through here, through here, then we can't use it. You with me on that? Because then it wouldn't tell you a side. Then you pick another one, you can do like zero, one, or something like that. That'd be fine. Uh, something on the y-axis. So you, you can make zeros if you like. I, mean, I, I, I love, love you to use zero, zero every time if you can. If, you, if it goes through the origin, then of course you have to pick another point, pick one, one, or anything that you want. It really doesn't matter as long as it's not on that line. So we're picking one point on the line, try zero, zero if you can, or use zero, zero if you can. And here's the rules. If the point works, if the point makes a true statement, you're going to shade the side of the line, the half plane, that that point is on. makes a true statement, shade the half plane that the point is on. If the point makes a false statement, you're going to shade the half plane opposite where your point is. Okay, it's a whole lot of writing. What we're basically saying is this, you're checking a point, just one point. If it works, if it's true, shade that side. If it doesn't work, if it's false, shade the other side. That, that's all I'm saying up here. Okay, and the half plane just means the side of the line. So what we're going to do after we've set it equal, after we've found our intercepts, after we've graphed our line with the dotted or solid line, depending on whether we're equal or not equal, we're going to write a little word down here. We're going to write check. And you're going to tell me the point that we are going to check. What point is that in this case? Can we check zero, zero? Yeah. yeah, it's not going through there. Why not? So we're going to check zero, zero. And here's how we do it. We just take zero, zero, and you're going to plug this into the, what, the equals one or the inequality? Which do you think? Inequality. This was just temporary. Okay, this was only for one reason. It was just to make your line. We're going to plug this back into your original inequality. So check one point not on the line in the inequality. So we should have, instead of x, 0, instead of y, 0, and we're checking to see if, if that's greater than 3. What do we get on the left hand side, everybody? This is where you got to be good at this. Is 0 greater than 3? Is that true or is that false? false? Definitely false. Okay, any show of hands if you're okay getting down to that far? Good, okay, that's fantastic. Now, what does this tell you? Here's another important part. These are the two key points. I can typically get everybody to get down to this part, right? You draw the line, no problem. This is old school stuff, old stuff. 
Old school. That's old school. But here's what you did. You just checked this point. Identify the point that you checked. Okay, identify the point you checked. You just check the origin. Most of the time you'll be able to check that. The only time you cannot check that is, well, if it goes to the origin, you can't check that. We just checked the origin. Did the origin make a true statement or a false statement? False. Okay, here's the key point. If this had been true, if this had been true, we would be shading this whole side. Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. If that had been true. Was it true? So what side are, what side, what side are we going to shade? <laughs> We're going to shade this side. We're going to shade the other side. If the side doesn't work, if it's false, it says none of these points work. You know what? You can spend all day checking points. If you check one zero, you know what? It's not going to work. Negative two, two. It's not going to work. None of these points is going to work. Every one of these points will work. Check it out if you want to. Try, uh, try five zero. You try five zero, five minus zero is five. Is five bigger than three? Absolutely, you got it. So this whole side is going to work out for us. The way we represent that, we're just going to shade it. It goes on forever. That's a whole half of a plane, half graph. So we check the point. If it's true, we would have shaded that side. If it's false, you shade the other side. Raise your hand if you're okay with that. Good. Now, do these really take 30 minutes to actually do? No. no they're pretty quick. In fact, we're going to do one in about five minutes right now. You know the steps. So, you have them on your paper. What's the first thing that we're going to do here, folks? Temporarily, this is the only time you ever do this. Set it equal to zero to your right. This just allows you to find your intercepts. So we're going to find our x-intercept first. So write out x-intercept. And down here we'll have the y-intercept. To find the x-intercept, what do I cover up? Yeah, all I want is I want the x. I just want that term. So if I cover up the y, that means I'm having y equals 0. We're going to rewrite the rest. What's the rest when I cover that up? What equals 4? Hey, you're done. You have the x-intercept. Let's find the y-intercept. Y-intercept means you're taking x equals to 0. That means I'm going to cover up which term here? This one, this one, option one or option two, like an optometrist. One or two. One. Yeah, this one. I, I need that sign with it. So I'm going to rewrite the rest. Negative 4y equals 4. Is there anything else I have to do with this one? Yeah. I want you to know something. This is kind of cool about standard form. And don't you like the standard form graphing? It's kind of nice, right? Just cover two things up. Even if you got a fraction, you can still do it, couldn't you? Just go up to a fraction, no problem. If you had three halves, go over one and a half. It's still possible. If we divide by negative 4, we're going to get y equals negative 1. We're now ready to graph our line. Here's x, here's y. We already have an x-intercept. Bam. We've already got a y-intercept right there. Let's graph this. Where am I going to go on the x-axis? Four to the right. Okay. I can do that. Two, three, Forward to the right, plot myself a point here, 